Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. You'll be able to see there the US 30 continues on its, uh, its advance up towards uh, 18,000. Uh, we are a little bit away from there right now, but uh, nevertheless, this kind of breakout that we've seen uh, trading above uh, the all time highs, uh, which previously was around about uh, 17,433. In fact, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and add that on there. Um, we continue to, to branch out as uh, more US economic data comes in uh, relatively well, albeit jobless claims did miss a little bit yesterday. Uh, things still looking pretty good for the US economy in the medium to long term. Um, so 18,000 does seem to be a bit of a psychological run number. Obviously, when we're trading all, near all time highs like this, it's quite difficult. Um, some traders may choose to use uh, Fibonacci price projection, uh, which I'll probably have a look at at some point uh, on one of these other videos next week. Um, just because I've got so many support and resistance levels already drawn on here. Um, but as long as the economic data still continues to come in quite uh, quite strongly, um, the, the American market seems to do quite well. SPX 500 is a little bit flatter due to the um, the drag of energy stocks, uh, but the US 30 is still soldiering on. So UK 100 coming up quite close to potential resistance at 6666, and um, we are looking at a, a break up above 55 period SMA, um, and having a, a look at this level here. If we break above that, we might be looking at 6774. So Japan to do five very much in focus. Um, dollar yen as ever helping to drive that. We are looking at the long term potential resistance at eighteen three three two, um, and then the very short term right there, we are looking at a potential resistance which was broken today, uh, and of the dollar yen and helping that. People are liking the look of Japanese equities right now with uh, with uh, economics and obviously. Um, the Prime Minister out there is talking about having an early election and delaying the uh, the tax increase that Japan is looking to have. And that's causing some quite decent moves in dollar yen as well as people are buying Japanese equities and using dollar yen to hedge their yen exposure because nobody wants to have um, you know advanced in equities but then be getting um, screwed on that dollar yen exchange rate. Um, so quite an interesting uh, move that we're seeing right there. So as long as we stay above 17,435, things are looking a bit tasty for the next potential resistance at 18,332. Uh, now we are a little bit away from there just now. So moving on to dollar yen actually, you can see that we smashed above uh, one spot 14. Um, we're probably looking, well, matter of fact, we go into the weekly time frame. Let's see how far back we can uh, we can see. We're probably looking now at a potential move towards the next level, which would be run about 124. So I'm actually going to cycle into that daily time frame there to see that level more clearly. So one spot 1474 is the potential support. The longer term potential resistance, which is miles away incidentally, is 124 spot 42. Now that's probably around anything above 120 is interventionist um, for the Japanese government because obviously they don't want the Japanese yen to go down too much because material costs get too expensive. The Japanese yen continues to get weaker. Albeit energy costs are at a multi-year low right now. So it'll uh, be interesting to see how things go. Dollar yen looks to be in a golden uh, area right now for um, some interesting moves. So we'll have to see how that progresses. So looking at crude oil West Texas, it has been getting absolutely smashed the last uh, well for quite some time, trading below a lot of major potential support levels. As you can see, there are one of our uh, so far below that. I just need to go a little bit further back. Okay, so you're probably looking at sixty-four dollars as the next major major level. Actually, you could probably get away with around about 70. So if I jump back onto the daily interval there for a second, it's had a torrid, torrid week. Uh, I could probably do with getting rid of some of these extra support and resistance levels on here. Um, but incidentally, um, just the way this is going, uh, $70, spot 41 is the next potential support. I'm actually kind of surprised to see West Texas crude trading below 77 so aggressively. Um, but that's the Saudis keep on pumping more crude. They're quite happy to support those lower prices. Um, and trading below $75, that's not to be sniffed at either. So, um, technical breakout, $75 might act as new potential resistance as it was broken support, now eyeing up 70 spot 41 as the next potential support level. Um, and crude oil is kind of really seen as a tax on the global uh, global economy and global markets. Obviously, you need crude for pretty much everything at an energy source. So you're basically seeing a big reduction in tax globally for business and the industry, uh, which should be helping to propel the equity markets on that little bit higher. So those moves on West Texas crude have wide ramifications for many, many markets and many industries. So gold's not really doing too much as ever, bouncing around about potential support at 11.55. 
to be honest, that's not where the action is at. Um, keep an eye on dollar yen, Japan 225, and West Texas crude. That's probably where you're going to see a lot of traders focusing their attention. So finishing up there with Euro dollar, uh, I can just drop this new um, broken support now acting as resistance. So one spot 24.98 is the potential resistance level. This is a pivot for further downside momentum for Euro dollar. Uh, albeit there's been lots of consolidation around this level. It's uh, going to be driven by the fundamentals. And as I said, the jobless claims from the US yesterday did disappoint. We're still looking at one spot 2047 as the longer term potential support level uh, for traders to be aware of. Um, and if we do see the ECB buying up more corporate bonds and um, we do get more uh, of an idea of a potential final rate cut in the Eurozone, then Euro dollar should tumble. But that's not happened as of yet. There's just lots of talk and rumors as ever. Um, but it, uh, there's not been as much downside. Bear in mind that uh, Euro dollar has already come off so aggressively over 2014. Um, it's not surprising that it hasn't continued to, to slump that little bit further, but there will come a point where it will pick a direction, and you just want to make sure you're on the, on the right side of that. So finishing up with cable, cable is uh, moving to the downside once again, breaking below potential support, one spot 57.42. That's a significant uh, support level, uh, because there isn't actually anything else now to all the way down at one spot 54.24. Um, so expect 157.42 to be a new potential resistance level to be aware of and there's a lot of potential downside there should um, the sterling continue to disappoint and obviously the US dollar is on a run right now. So in regards to economic data, we've already had German gross domestic product pretty much coming in as expected, maybe slightly better on this side. Uh, we do have retail sales due to date as well in the US. Uh, I've got my recurring alert already set on that. And then you've got the Consumer Sentiment Survey, University of Michigan Sentiment Index, uh, and that's due out at 2.55. And if we fast forward then on to Monday, nothing really super exciting. You do have industrial production. Tuesday, lots of UK data, ZAW business report, and uh, PPI on the US. So there is a fair amount coming out on Tuesday uh, to keep you going. But remember, there are a few bits and bobs today uh, to finish off your uh, your trading week. So keep your eye on the chart forum as ever. Make insights part of your layout going forward. And join me again on Monday to find out what happened next.